There has been a lot of talk about the new group by and pivot by functions replacing pivot tables. Now, I'm not sure that's true, but in today's video, we're looking at a technique using group by which isn't possible with standard pivot tables. We're going to show period and year to date results with their variances against budget, along with a projection for the full year. And all of this will be in a single output. For this, we're going to look at some really interesting array techniques, which means even if this isn't your scenario, there's still lots to learn. So if you're ready, let's get started. On the left, we have our data. It contains a category column, a date column, a version column, which can contain the text of actual or budget and a value column. In cell H3, we have our period end date. Below that, we have the calculations that determine the period start and period end for each column. For example, for the first column in our report, it starts on the 1st of January and ends on the 31st of January and only contains actual values. Now, the most interesting date is in column N. This is our year to go. So this will calculate how much of the budget we still have left for the rest of the year. That means that the start date Will be the day after our period end date and then the end date will be the end of the year. For these dates we have used the EO month, date and year functions. If you want to see how these functions have been constructed please download the example file. If we change our period end date from January to February all the dates update. If we change it to March once again all of those dates update. For the formatting of the headers, we have used the single accounting underline to get the small white space between each column. And we have applied center across selection to the period and year to date values so that they are centered across all three columns. So that's the setup of the workbook. Now let's build our formula. We want the formula to show actual budget and variance for the period and year to date. We also want to calculate the budget year to go along with a full year projection, which is the actual year to date plus the budget year to go. So now let's make a start and build this formula. For our formula, we will be using Boolean logic. That means we will be using true and false to determine which values we calculate. So let's start by building our formula in cell G13. I'll type equals opening bracket. The first check is whether each value in our date column is less than or equal to our end dates. So I will select the date column and I want to check whether that is less than or equal to H7 to N7. I can then enter a closing bracket. That is our first check and it will return true or false for each of our time periods. Our second check is whether that same date is greater than or equal to the start date. Now, because we want to use AND logic, I'm going to enter an asterisk to multiply the values. I'll enter another opening bracket and we want to check whether the date column is greater than or equal to the values in H6 to N6. This will also return a true or false value for each time period. We also want to check whether the version is equal to actual or budget. So I'll enter another asterisk and open another bracket. And we want to check whether the version column is equal to H8 to N8. We can then enter a closing bracket on that condition. If all of those conditions are true, it will return one. If any of those conditions are false, it will return zero. So that means we can now multiply that by our value column. When we calculate that, it returns zero where those conditions are not true or it returns the number where those conditions are true. If we look at the third value in our table of 98, which is on the 31st of March and is an actual value, we can see that that is between the start date, the end date and is equal to the version for our first column. Therefore, it returns 98. This is also true for our first year to date column. Therefore, it also returns 98. But it is not true 
for any of the other columns, therefore it returns zero. Which means we now have the numbers that should be returned for each time frame and version. Let's now edit our formula. At the start, we're going to use the let function. Let allows us to allocate calculations to names. And the first name that we're going to create is values in period. That means that our previous Boolean calculation will be allocated to that name. Now let's add another name called calc. For this, we're going to use the group by function. The first argument of group by is row fields. For this, we want to select the category column. The next argument is values. We have calculated our values in our values in period calculation. So let's enter that. The next argument is function. In this scenario, we're going to use the sum function. We can now close our group by. Let's now calculate this result so we can see the result of our group by function. The last argument of let is the value that we want to return. We want to return our calc name. We can then close the bracket and calculate. You can see we have our categories column. Then we have our actual and budget for period. Our difference column displays nothing. We have our actual and budget for year to date with a difference column that displays nothing. And we also have our budget year to go calculation. So what we now need to do is to insert our difference calculations and also calculate our full year projection. Let's go and edit our formula. I will delete the section at the end and create a new name called result. For this, we're going to use the H stack function. The first columns that we want to stack are going to be our category column, followed by our period actual and our period budget. Therefore, we're going to use the choose cols function. The array will be the result of our calc. And then we want columns one, two, and three. Next, we need to calculate the difference between our budget and our actual. So once again, we'll use choose cols. Our array will be our calc. We want column two, and we want to minus from that the choose cols using our calc again, and we want column three. So that will give us the actual minus the budget. Next, we want the actual and budget values for year to date. These were already calculated in our calc result. Therefore, we can use choose cols once again. For the array, we want to use calc, and this time we want to return columns five and six. Next, we want to calculate the difference between the year-to-date actual and the year-to-date budget. We're going to use choose cols once again. We want calc as our array, and we want column five. From that, we want to minus the choose cols using our calc, and we want to minus column six. The next column that we want to display is our budget year to go. That is the eighth column in our group by. Therefore, we're going to use choose cols again on our calc, and we want column eight. Finally, we want to calculate the full year projection. This is going to be our actual year to date plus our budget year to go. So therefore, we're going to use choose cols once more. The array will be the calc, and we want column five. Then we want to add choose cols once more using the calc, and we want column eight. That's all of the columns that we want to return, so we can now close our H stack. We're now ready to return our result, so for the last value of let, we will enter result, close the bracket, and calculate. That now gives us our result. For our categories, we have the actual budget and difference for the period, the actual budget and difference for the year to date, we then have the year to go for the budget and then a full year projection. What happens if we change our dates from March to April? When we do that, everything updates accordingly. And that is it. In this video, we've seen how to calculate period, year to date and projections using actual and budget values. Now, if you want to understand these types of array techniques, then you should check out our Excel Academy. That's the place where we teach you how to become an Excel ninja and save huge amounts of time. Just head on over to excelofthegrid.com and take a look. And then once you've done that, why not watch this video next? I think it's another one you'll really enjoy. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.